Hey there. Welcome to the first lesson of the chapter Human Health and Diseases. The lesson is on the basics of human defense system. That will be an introduction for you. Before starting the chapter, let me introduce myself. I'm a student. Yes, you heard that right. I'm a student at an IIT Raurkela studying biomedical engineering. I think we have a great connect. I did also prepared for pre-medical exams. I'm a plus 2. I did qualify them with a good score, but I didn't went for an MBBS. I'm currently studying in a research based study that is on biomedical engineering. Well, I'm not going to that. Uh, in due course of our lectures, we'll be studying to sticking to the points and we won't get deviate from the main path because I really understand what kind of problems we face. Yes, we face while preparing for the entrance exams. We will be sorting out all those problems. So stay tuned to the videos at Unacademy. So let's begin. Now, before saying anything, the basic thing that you know, that you should know, is that what exactly a defense system and what for it is. A defense system is obviously for defending you, for protecting you. Now, why to have a defense system? Obviously, because you are living in a such environment filled with lots of foes. The force to you as well as your body. That's very important because the force around you are like viruses, those bacteria, protozoans, helminths, etc. These are very dangerous for your delicate system. So we need a defense system that is our immune system to protect it. Now what is immunity? Basically I'm going by the definition because that's very easy to grasp. To define it, we can say it that is immunity as the ability of an organism to defend itself from the hostile environment containing lots of foes. You exactly know which hostile environment I am referring to. The environment with all those pathogens that can invade our body and cause disease in our body. Now, since we are having a delicate immune system with a big army, each member assigned a particular task. Now, to make it further very magnificent we are having several lines of defense in our immune system the first line of defense that includes your skin and the mucus coat any invader any pathogen that wants to enter your body will get avoided by the body through your skin at first and if it goes inside your mouth the mucus coat will be protecting your body from that pathogen now suppose by chance it enters, it crosses the first line of defense. There is a second line of defense for protecting you against that pathogen. That basically includes those ne neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, interferons. All these are cellular defense system. I am telling you the names. I will be describing them in upcoming lectures. So don't get panicked about it. Alright. Now the third line of defense. It basically includes the specific immunity by T and B lymphocytes. I'll be telling you about T and B lymphocytes. For the moment, just understand they are pathogen specific guided missiles. Suppose an pathogen, a pathogen comes in, it crosses the first line of defense and somehow it manages to cross the second line of defense too. Then our body, our immune system will be firing specific missiles named as T and B lymphocytes on it that will go specifically to those pathogens and kill them. This is how the lines of defense system are there in the body. Now, what is required to be known to you is that what exactly happens now, what is the typical response of the body when it encounters with a pathogen. Please mind the words and try to keep it into your memory. Now, exactly how it is going to happen, just understand. First of all, whenever there is an attack of any pathogen on the body or there is an external cut or wound, then the body responds in the following way. At first, there is rubber. These are all Greek terms, okay, Greek or Latin terms. So you just need to remember rubber. Rubber is that redness that you see. It is basically due to vasodilation. Now, what is vasodilation? Vaso means your veins and dilation means they dilate, it means they spread up. What is going to happen is that more amount of blood will flow through that vein due to which the redness appears on the skin that you see that is basically river. Then there is calor. 
get clarified regarding the words then only you can understand otherwise you need to go via road learning that is i don't prefer then we are having calor calor is basically the heat sometimes you get itchy sensation that's all due to because of that calor okay the calor is the heat generated around that attack portion why it happens is that because it is due to the fast metabolism going on there the fight the fight between our immune system and the pathogen that have entered is responsible for the fast metabolic rate and that is calor then we are having tumor the area swells up why this happens because first of all vasodilation have taken place the vessels have blood vessels have been dilated now the blood flows out some some plasma flows out that happens just because the fight is outside those vessels and due to accumulation of those immune barriers those immune system fighters those lymphocytes that i'll be discussing in the later lectures the area gets filled up with certain greater number of particles so greater number of cells due to which it swells up that is said to be tumor at last what happens is dolor what is dolor the pain that you feel that is due to injury in your neurons some chemicals that are specifically called please remember the name prostaglandins that are released that give the sensation of pain so just remember at first rubber then we are having calor then tumor then dolor this is the typical response of the body to when a pathogen invades the body now proceeding further yeah the cause of response now what is the cause behind all this kind of response that is the human immune system now immunity there are two kinds of immunity one is your acquired immunity as the word suggests that you acquire that you that you come to know in due course of time and then innate immunity these are two kinds of immunity at first what is exactly acquired immunity i am reading out the definition please try understand try to grasp it acquired immunity that is the immunity that you acquire in the due course of your life as you encounter different kind of pathogens it's like the more you are exposed to environmental pathogens the more strong becomes your immune memory it's encounter memory based defense now it's very simple suppose you you all know about vaccination what is vaccination some weakened pathogens are introduced to your body like in in your childhood you might have been given mmr vaccine after that you might have caught a fever now for what that fever was that was due to weaken the real attenuated real but weakened pathogens were entered into your body through injection now those pathogens what happened is that we are having certain specific memory based cells in our immune system which remember the encounter with different pathogens now that would now that mmr vaccine that was put into your body got a response from immune system and that was the first encounter of our body with that mmr pathogens now since that was the first encounter the response was slow but somehow the body managed to kill that pathogen now then what exactly happens is that that particular response of the body is stored in the memory and when in future if that pathogen comes back to the body the body responds since it already knows how to respond it can respond in a better way and that's how acquired immunity is get into our body gets into our body clear about in acquired immunity now next innate immunity innate immunity is basically what you have inherited from your parents which has been coming from generations to generations now that has basically innate immunity includes four kinds of barriers that you have since your birth please mind it you are having it since your birth at first you are having physical barriers we are having skin obviously we are have that's a kind of immunity that gives you immune power that's a physical barrier your eyelashes your body hair all these are parts of your immune system then we are having physiological barriers that we have inherited from our parents the acid that is secreted in your stomach that's very acidic and it can kill uh, a great variety of pathogens that might come with food and the saliva in your mouth 
Yeah, there is a pig, there is a substance called as lysozyme, which is antibacterial in your saliva. That's also a physiological barrier. Next, we are having cellular barriers that are like macrophages and monocytes. I'll be discussing these two in detail in upcoming slides. Then we are having cytokine barriers. Cytokine barriers are basically interferons. You might know I'm I'll clear regarding these interferons in upcoming lectures all right just remember the types and names just remember i'll be clarifying you regarding this now next topic next is your active and passive immunity now these are also kinds of immunity the active i'm reading out what is written then i'll explain you active immunity when antibodies produced in body in response to pathogens all right it is a slow response, better for us since creates memory cells for every antibody produced. Now what is exactly happening is that, suppose a pathogen comes into your body. Now what, you have two ways, either send, send some antibodies from outside, like some that you have created in the lab, send it into the body, let them fight with the pathogen, let them kill them and just enjoy. Or else what you can do is that, let your immune system make certain antibodies let the immune system kill up kill that pathogen that has entered into your body these are two responses that you can have now the active immunity that involves the second kind of response that is when antibodies against the pathogen are produced inside the body okay so that is an active immunity it is will obviously be slow since if it is if it is the first encounter the body will take time to understand how to respond to that pathogen so it is a slow response but it is better for us since as i mentioned you in previous slides there is a memory in our immune system and if our body prepares certain antibodies then it is obviously much better since for further encounters we have now memory cells so that slow response will in further due course of time if sometimes that pathogen invades again then we will have a very fast and effective response so that's active immunity in passive immunity what i told you that like some external antibodies will be provided to you a very common example for infants they are advised to drink um, milk from mother only now because there is one thing called as colostrum that is the first milk is said to be colostrum that is yellowish in color that contains a immunoglobulin that is basically a kind of antibody you can know i'll tell you about immunoglobulins in upcoming slides so it contains iga immunoglobulin a that is a kind of antibody so that is a kind of passive immunity because your body have not made that particular thing it is being injected into you it is being taken by you okay all those antibiotics that you take is an ex come under passive immunity so this was the difference between active and passive immunity okay i made you clear about innate immunity acquired immunity and about the typical response of the body so be clear regarding these things we'll be meeting in the next lecture with some focused topics okay because this was just an introduction okay you'll be enjoying the coming slides stay tuned to the lectures enjoy an academy thank you